Great Googles to the Moogles, y'all. Welcome back to Ringworm. As you know, I have a pretty hard rule against making informational videos, how-to videos. I am well aware that I am just a doorknob out in the woods struggling to figure out how the pieces fit together. And in this one specific instance, I thought I'd show you how to do something. At some point in everybody's lifetime, they need a cover for something, like an outdoor cover for something. I don't know, like a grill or in my case a generator. Or you've got a stack of chairs you want to leave out over the winter. You want to put a cover over those. And just in case you run into that situation again in your future, you've got a sewing machine, you don't really know how to use it, you need to make a simple cover. I'm going to show you how to do it. I need to get these bins out of here. This is sewing stuff here, scrap fabric, and then the man cave has got sewing machines and bolts a different kind of canvas and all sorts of stuff it's getting cold enough now that it's just the matter a short matter of time before my my coolers have to come in the cabin so all my food doesn't freeze and i can't fit them in here while there's crap right here and i don't want to get the crap out of here until i've got these couple little projects done all this sewing stuff is still here because i used it to make my uh whoops too much crap hanging in the corner to make my uh, furry retractable blackout shades here. I do absolutely love how those things came out. I think they're incredibly funky. Maybe one of a kind. I don't know. You think anybody else has ever made curtains just like that? But of course, unless it's horrific weather, I, I haven't used them yet. I haven't sat down in here, closed them all down, watched a movie in the middle of the day. I don't know. In two or three days, there's supposed to be one day of just pouring rain, super high wind, so... I don't know, maybe I'll have a movie day. They'll get used. They'll get used eventually. So there's two really simple covers I want to make real quick. One's for this generator so I don't have to keep throwing a tarp over it. At some point, I'm going to do some kind of a permanent roof over the top of it so it'll, it can run when it's raining or snowing and not get wet. I haven't made the roof yet because I think eventually this spot right here on the front of the cabin is going to be a big screened in porch. And for the same reason, I haven't really done anything else with these stairs, like put a railing on one side. The ends of the stringers are still just jammed in the dirt, so they're definitely going to rot eventually, but I don't know what's going to happen with these stairs. I might just end up tearing them apart when I do the screened in here. But this will be the easiest, most straightforward cover you could make, just like you do a cover for a grill or something, so I thought that'd be a good one to show you. Just a rectangle with the top on it, you slide it over there. I'll show you the one other cover we got to do. A lot of times you make a cover for something and you want it to cinch under the bottom. That, it's not going to matter. It's never going to blow off. But you can put a tie around the bottom. You can put elastic in there. You can do Velcro to cinch it down. This is the air intake and outlet for the heater inside. I'm not going to use this cover now, but when it comes springtime, I want to have the cover ready so I pop it on there. Otherwise, you know, spring comes. I stop using the heater, I don't get the sewing machine out for four months, and then this is left open all season. There's a chance that there were some critters in this. I'm sure there are bugs in it, but there may have been mice. But there's definitely no reason to leave this open to the elements all spring, summer, fall when the heater's not being used. So we'll to make a tiny cover that goes over there, and maybe we'll do uh, Velcro to cinch it down. Got a couple other things that I need to sew up. I don't know if that'll in this video but something that's been on my list for two years now so you guys remember the uh, giant slingshot I had out here there was a whole bunch of rubber tied together and you could launch chunks of firewood into a bunch of bowling pins I had down here well my ammo has been sitting here for over a year just rotten might as well make a mesh bag for those and we could just hang them on a tree. I guess if we made it big enough, we could put the bowling pins in there too. You know, right now the bowling alley is full of uh, deer bones. So this will be pretty straightforward. 26 by, let's go 27 by 18. And let's say 21 tall. The easiest way to imagine this is just four squares for the side, one square for the top. But of course, if you got a big roll of fabric and you can get this one, this one, and this one all out of one piece, you could have 
long rectangle, two small rectangles, however you like. So the measurements I've got, I'm going to add a half inch on that side, that side, and that side, because you need to be able to sew the panels together. The bottom I add two and a half inches on, because, oh, actually just like this, <clears throat> makes the whole cover a little more robust if you have a piece folded under and sewn. If you do this with fabric, where it's just tucked, this raw edge will come unraveled, which actually for a cover like this isn't the worst thing. But I like to go, this is an extra two inches, and then this part will be folded under a half inch too. All the seams, everything like that, I just add a half inch. Having that extra strip of fabric here keeps it from stretching this way, keeps it from tearing, and then it's also just the right amount to put grommets in as well. Or if you want it to cinch all the way around the bottom, you can put a string through this pocket too. So that's five inch diameter, sticks out four and a half. All right, so the generator is 18 by 27 and 21 high. So for all the panels around the side, we're going to add a half inch, half inch, half inch, two and a half. So this one is 18, 21, I'm going to go half, 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 and then two and a half. Half, 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 two and a half, 22 by 30 times two panels, and then 18 by 27. Half all the way around is 19 by 28. And we only need one of those. This is the biggest scrap of green we have here. None of these are really going to work without sticking three panels, three pieces together to make one panel. So we'll just cut it all out of the roll. We've got some kind of stripey-ish brown scraps. Those would be good for the heater cover. So it's five inch diameter. We're going to add a half inch. So that's six and then we're going to have this piece so we're going to go a little extra there a little extra there and we'll do the same thing we'll do an extra two two and a half inches on the bottom so we need seven and a half inches that's the two and a half plus the half and then i don't know we'll just do it doesn't matter we're going to make this a little long and then we'll fit it later so let's just do 17. so make our six inch circle I cut these out on this kind of fabric. This is, I believe this is actually Sunbrella. That's, you've heard me talk about that before. That's kind of the high-end exterior waterproof canvas. Stuff lasts absolutely forever. So if you're not gonna fold the edges under a couple times like this and sew it, if you sew it like that, then there's no, and there's no edge to fray. If you cut them with scissors like this, they're much less likely to fray like this. Or you can cut them with regular scissors and just take a lighter and burn the edge. This stuff melts really nicely. You know what, just so you can see it, I'm gonna go ahead and, that's a six inch circle. Let's draw the original five inch circle on there. So that's the size this thing needs to be. All this is just extra to be sewn under. All right, seven and a half by 17. Yep, you can definitely get that out of this one. Seven and a half is right there, 17. I drew the extra lines on here just so you could see how it goes together. So this part gets a half inch folded under like that, and then it'll get folded again at that line. So the bottom will end up like that folded underneath. And then this line is the extra to attach to this. Those two will get sewn together right on that line on either side. Usually if you pre-fold this and crease it pretty hard with your finger or use something hard to crease it down there, when you go to sew it, you can usually find where you've already creased it. I'm just going to go ahead and tape this so you can see it, how it goes together. You could also just pin it too. That would work fine. So 
So that's our half inch. And there's our two inch. We'll wrap all the way around. And that's how you do the bottom of the sides of the generator too, is that half inch and then two inch. And then you could put grommets in it if you wanted. Or again, you could feed some string through there or some bungee. This would be slightly faster to make if I combined like two panels together. So there'd be a few less seams here and there, but I lost almost, almost zero fabric by putting all five panels on here and kind of moving them around. All right, so we're gonna do our fold here and our tuck under there. So we're gonna do a line at a half and another two. By the way, Pretty much everything I use here, I get it all from Sailrite, sailrite.com. They're kind of the biggest company, the standard in the marine canvas making industry. This machine I've got here is a Sailrite machine. It's the smallest industrial machine you can probably get, and it's made to be portable, so you can take it on a boat. But I get my thread and snaps and fasteners and zippers and fabric and everything from them. If you're wondering, these are... This marker I've got here is actually stone. It's soapstone. So it works on everything but really light colored fabrics. We also have soapstone chunks. And then this one, this I think is a new one they sell, a twist out one. I think it's soapstone, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it might not be. It might be more like a hard crayon. I've got another super light machine uh, that I use for really really light materials you can get get away with doing some of this stuff with the regular light household machine but when you get to corners and stuff and you've got six layers of fabric sometimes it doesn't want to go through there i don't usually mark this half inch out i just guess i've done this enough to know about what a half inch is it's a tiny bit off it doesn't matter but the other two inch fold, it's hard to guess at. And I'm not gonna tape these. I'll just, now there's a little bit of a crease, I'll sew this first side here and then flip that and sew the second one. It'll be pretty easy like that. I think I'm just using regular polyester thread here, which is a good match with this fabric. It's really easy to sew with. If it sits in direct sunlight for years and years and years, it'll get eaten up. And they do make some pretty cool threads like out of Kevlar and stuff that you can't even you take a lighter to it and it'll just glow it's a lot more expensive and tends to get a lot, a lot twistier in my my experience I used to try to match the thread to the color of fabric so you didn't see the thread as much but I mean when you're mixing different fabrics together it just gets to be too much of a hassle so now I pretty much use black on everything so that's the first stitch, and then we'll fold this under for the second one. So that's the bottom. But more than anything, if there's tension on it, it just keeps it from stretching, having that extra material in there. So that's two ends of it. Those fit together nicely. Unfortunately, I screwed up the other two sides. I don't know if you could see on my notepad when I screwed up, but I added my two inch flap onto the wrong end. So I trimmed one side off and I cut another piece to add onto here. And just the way it worked out, I think this is just the right size to actually make this flap on the bottom. So we'll hold those together there. This kind of stuff, small pieces, you don't really need to pin together. If this was like 10 feet long, you can kind of get one piece that walks over time and you'll end up with one longer than the other, but a short piece like this shouldn't make much difference. So there's our half inch.
somehow my tension got turned up a little bit. See how it's puckered together like that? Fold it all the way back underneath to make my two inch strip there. All right, we got all four and it looks like they're all the same size. So that's good, came out right. I like to sew all four of these around the outside of the cover before putting the top on. So we're gonna do that. So this is the outside, this is the outside. We're gonna come together like that. So we'll just flip it and sew it together. Now, sewing panels together like that, if you want to make it look nice and you want to make it strong, pull it open like that and stitch it again. The only reason I don't do that on the cover like this is when you go to sew the corners or the top of this onto the top panel, this part gets a little wonky. I'll show you in a minute what I mean. together. Stitch the last couple. There's the sides. I don't know if you'd be able to see this, but the top goes on here. I don't stitch this all the way up to the very tippity top. You want to be able to kind of open that corner up a little bit so that this fits on here. Just going to start in the middle of one of these sides here. The trick is kind of getting around these corners. If these two side pieces are stitched up to the top, you can't open it up to make a corner here. Can you see that at all, can you? Well, if you try doing this yourself, you'll do it once, you'll figure out what I mean. If you do stitch these all the way up to the side, all these four panels, and you get to a corner, you can always go and just rip a couple stitches out. So I go to a half inch to the corner. So when I turn it, I'm still a half inch away from this new side. The good thing is you can always rip stitches out, recut stuff. I don't know if you can see these two sides that came together. Look how far off they are. That's like a half inch off. I don't know if that's because my tuck wasn't right on one of these. Oh yeah, one's tucked up a little further than the other. So there's a lot of messing around. You know, I could go back and just trim a, a half inch off this side if I want. Never be afraid to just try it and then rip all your stitches out and do it again. I've ripped out miles of stitching trying to learn how to do all this stuff especially when you get more complicated shapes or you know stuff on boats that's all curved there's a lot of screw-ups to be had you know in fact i'm gonna go ahead and rip some stitches out right now <laughs> listening to a podcast sewing and trying to make a video it's it's about three times too much for my brain i can barely do one of these things actually that's not true i'm pretty good at listening to podcasts but my corner did not line up very well, so I'm just going to rip that last little bit out. And rip. If you kind of find this interesting and you want to see, I got so many messages that making the window shades, the furry window shades in here, were people's favorite videos I've ever made. <laughs> Probably just because they were so bizarre. I'll put a link here and uh, one in the description if you want to see that. That was a really fun project to do, even though it took me like a month and a half to get going on it. There's our box. Turn it right side out. All right, before we move on to the other color, let's see if it fits. Yep, just fine. A little big, actually quite big. Oh, it's just because this isn't a perfectly flat corner. 
That's fine though. That'll cover it up, keep the rain off. Kind of a big shapeless bag, isn't it? Oop. I meant to sew my measurements on the inside, but with this soapstone, you can just lick your finger and wipe it off of there. A much more professional and in depth way to do this takes about two or three times as long as to make patterns for everything, and you can make it fit like a glove. But that cover will get used for, I don't know, maybe a year and then it'll be underneath some kind of roof. So that's great. It's waterproof. The other way that actually would have been faster and easier to do that is instead of cutting four panels for the sides and one for the top, is just to make one long panel for the sides and let it wrap all the way around. And then when you come back together, you can cut the extra off and stitch the sides, which is kind of what I'm going to do with this. We've got that little two inch fold under there and this is longer than it needs to be to go all the way around this so go all the way around there'll be some extra we'll clip it off and we'll be done oh yeah we just taped this two inches we haven't even sewn it yet sewed it sewed it, it. all right we got that stitched up now we're just going to try to stitch the white line to the white line so just continue rolling this so I stitched all the way around and I cut right where they meet because I'm going to do something kind of weird with this if it'll work sometimes it's kind of hard to fold edges and sew together actually I mean, I could sew that together, and I guess it would probably just slide on. I kind of want a Velcro thing to hold this tight, and if it's already sewn together, you just get kind of one size. Sometimes edges look nicer when they have a binding on them like that. You know, if it was a material like that, you could fold it under a couple times and just stitch it. But I like that finish like that. So you can buy rolls of binding like this. I just get the one color black. I think this is one inch binding. And then you just fold it over like that and put it around the edge. Like that and stitch it. Or if you don't want to buy this, you can make your own by just cutting a two inch strip of fabric. And then you do your half inch fold under on both sides which is always easier if you have a little tape. So you end up with a one inch strip and then you fold it in half and that's your binding for the edges. I could just use that brown stuff, it'd work fine. I think I'm gonna use the black just so you can see it. If I do the brown, you won't be able to see anything. Just cut the binding off right at the end there. Trim that end off. And I always melt the end of the binding so it doesn't fuzz up. Now, if we turn it back the right way, we got a round cover. This is such a small thing, it's going to have a little pooch in it from this stuff, but I think that'll be good. And then we can put Velcro that'll fold under, and this will be underneath it. Put a little Velcro on there, some tape. Just stitch around the edges of the Velcro. Got our Velcro stitched on there, so that'll just hold over there, Velcro down. I think that looks pretty good. That'll close that thing up nicely. We'll just trim this off once we see what size it needs to be. Just turn the heater off so we gotta wait a couple minutes for that thing to cool down. 
I also thought, just in case you've never done grommets or seen grommets done, this is obviously I'm not going to put grommets in here, but if you did your two inch flap sewn under there, that's where you put the grommet. You can buy these little sets. This is just a sharpened end on here. Put down a piece of wood, put this thing on it, pound it a couple times with a hammer, it cuts a perfect circle out. Then you've got your piece there, set that on top, push it through the hole. This goes over on top of that, on top of your fabric. And then this piece goes in, you pound it a couple times and it rounds that edge off and seals it together. A lot of times this ring is just flat around there. I really like the ones with the little teeth on it. I don't know if you can see those. They really bite into the fabric and then if you're putting tension on that grommet, it's way less likely to rip out. Does it fit? Does it fit? It looks pretty good. Looks pretty pro. Ooh. Ooh. Very nice press fit. See how the Velcro does? Velcro's perfect. I think that's gonna do great. Now, can I put it somewhere where I'll find it in six months, three months, four, eight, whenever spring is? Probably not. I've either lost my mind or I've lost some of my fabric. I don't know if you call this pet screen. It's like super heavy duty rubberized stuff. I swear I had some uh, black stuff here, but I cannot find it. So we're gonna make this slingshot ammo bag out of this tan stuff. Kind of doesn't matter what size it is, right? I'm just gonna basically fold a piece in half, stitch the edges, maybe put a couple handles on it, call it good. So we'll make it whatever size we got here. I guess we're not gonna get to choose a, really a shape or size. Since this is all we got, that's gonna be the bag just like that. So I guess an easy way to do this would be fold a half inch under here, half inch under here, and sew them together. That would work fine, I guess. And then same with this, this will be the open side of the bag. So we'd fold it under two inches. You could also do the half inch hem underneath, but this isn't gonna unravel. So I don't think it's that big a deal. The only problem is those bowling pins are gonna stick out the top of the bag. So I'm gonna lose at least two inches on each side. I was thinking about maybe just making my two inch fold with some black fabric. Just cause I got a scrap to use up. Oh, well, we could do black along the edge and then we could just do that binding down the side. Black, black, black. That'd look kind of cool, let's do that. So I'm just gonna cut a bunch of two and a half inch strips out of this and I'll sew them all together. Our half inch. All right, just stitch that on there. This thing is completely unnecessary for doing as little of this binding as I'm going to, but I thought I'd put it on here to show you. Just screws onto the sewing machine. It's made just for this. Feed the binding in there, and it comes out the other side folded for you. So if you got a big roll of this, you just let it go step on the pedal and it just sucks it through, folds it exactly in half, stitches it in just the right spot. It's pretty cool. You can just stick it in there. Get it started. Take your piece and feed it right in there. That's it. Just remember, if you want to make something like this, you don't need to do binding at all. If you do want to, you can make your own binding. You definitely don't need this thing. You can just fold it in half and do it by hand. All right, got our black edge, black binding. That'll be the top. It's just gonna stitch the side together. Actually, maybe I'll just put binding down the side too.
That worked out pretty well. This is going to be, just because of the dimensions, a giant floppy bag. But it'll let the water drain and it should fit all my stuff in there. I guess maybe we should sew some handles on it so we can hang it from the tree. I got an awful lot of stuff to do before the winter sets in. I'm not sure this should be so high on my list, but I'm glad to have it done. Ooh, yeah, those are soggy. Whew. And heavy. That was plenty big. We can put a little more ammo in there next year. Looks a little professional for such a silly thing, doesn't it? That heavy-duty rubberized screen is good stuff. That'll last a long time. That'll probably be hanging there long after my cabin falls down. I tell you, if you don't have a sewing machine, get one. You can get a, an old used one with a whole lot of power made of cast iron. That'll plow through just about anything. You don't have to buy a new industrial machine for, I don't know, however much they cost. If you already know how to use a bandsaw and a table saw and a welder and a grinder and you don't know how to use a sewing machine, I, that's a little weird to me. Sewing machines, especially heavy duty ones, are such great tools. And it opens up like a whole nother world of things that you can make yourself. All right, I'm going back into the heat to finish up my little projects and uh, we'll get back to the kitchen hopefully next week. Thanks for watching. Hope you hope you learned something this one time. It's just like 160 some videos. This is the one time it's all right to learn something. All right, see you soon.